Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, just a real quick video today. I just wanted to kind of go over a couple of my favorite things in Vim, uh, things I use quite often. Um, and I just kind of wanted to show them to you. Um, if you're not real familiar with Vim, um, you might not know about these. If you are real familiar with Vim, you will know about these. I'm not claiming to be an expert in Vim by any means, so I'm not trying to educate anybody except maybe some people who are unfamiliar with it. Um, Again, I'm not an expert. I'm not the fastest in Vim. I am, you know, and I, I, there's still a ton for me to learn. But these are just a few things that I use pretty frequently that um, that help me out quite a bit. So that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Um, if you're a subscriber, thanks for coming back and checking out the video. If you're new, um, I hope this uh, is interesting to you or entertaining or both. Um, and if so, please do me a favor, check out my other videos. And then if you feel so led, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, that being said, here we go. Um, there's two commands or two things I like to do in Vim that I actually use quite often. Um, one of them has to do with when I'm changing my color schemes on things. Um, the other is if I have to edit multiple lines that are the same um, and I have to edit more than one word in them. So basically there's a couple things in Vim. You know, everybody, if you use Vim or have used Vim at any point, um, you are probably familiar with the, the movement keys. Your basic H, J, K, and L for left, right, down, and up. Um, insert mode is I. Um, undo is U. Um, escape is to exit insert mode. Uh, colon right or colon W Q to right quit um, or Z Z to exit. Or, you know, there's just diff there's different things. And if you if you've used Vim in, at any point in time, then um, you should know those. So that, that's not what this video is about. Um, there are other commands, you know, like moving forward uh, word by word with using W or moving backwards word by word by using B, moving forward to the end of the words uh, using E. So there's there's just a lot to learn with movement in Vim. Um, but again, not, not really what this video is about. What I want to show you is something that I use quite a bit. That being said, let's just jump into this. Um, <clears throat> A lot of times when I'm doing like color schemes on my window managers or configuration files, I have multiple things that are colored the same color, um, which means they have the same hex code or whatever RGB code or whatever I'm using in that file. They had the, I have that written multiple times in the file. And if you want to go through and change all those uniformly, then you have to go through one by one and change them if you don't really know this command. This has saved me a lot of time. So as we see right here, we've got these uh, just little sentences here. Cat is mean, dog is nice, cow is dirty, cat is clean, horse is fast. Now, there's only two of them here, but say there's about 100 of them. And cat is written 50 times. Now, say you want to change cat to human. And you don't want to have to go through each, 50, each of the 50 lines that say human in them and change each one individually. Real simple way to do that is you just hit colon, and then you do percent, which percent is saying in this file, this current file, and we're going to do S, we're going to substitute, and then we have the forward slash, and we're going to type in cat. Cat is the word we want to substitute. We want to get rid of cat, and then we're going to hit another forward slash, and we're going to put the word we want to replace it with. So we've said human, so we said we want to, in this file, so the percent in this file, we want to substitute for cat, and we want to put human. And then we're going to do another forward slash, and we hit G for globally, and then you hit enter. Now if you look up here, you can see both those instances of cat have been changed to human. Now like I said, in this file, that's not a big deal. There was two, cat was written twice, and it would have taken me 30 seconds to go through and change, maybe even less than that. It would have taken 30 seconds to change that. But again, if you have a file that's got hundreds and hundreds or thousands of lines of code and you have the same color code in there a couple times, multiple times, or even if you only have it in three or four times, but it's spaced out all over in the in the file and the file's thousands of lines long and you know you could do a search and find each one and this and change it manually. But this just allows for quick and easy changing. So Again, that is, let's change human back to cat. So all you gotta do is you type in percent %s for the percent sign means for in this file. S means we're gonna substitute. And then you do a forward slash. And this time we're gonna substitute human. We're gonna get rid of human. And we're gonna put cat back into the mix. And we're gonna do another forward slash and we hit G. So again, percent %s, forward slash human, forward slash cat, forward slash G, enter. Now, the two humans have been changed back to cat. Real simple. 
like I said, it's not that it's not that difficult. It's it's real simple. But again, in my configuration files, I've got so many different colors, and you know, if you look at my configurations in my window managers, they're not extremely colorful. But when I change the one color, one or two main colors, I don't want to have to go through everything and you know one by one change them. So this this has saved me probably no joke countless hours of going through and individually changing uh, color codes. So that being said, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm not real familiar with these, but there is one that I use quite often, is a macro. And macros are great for when you got to do not just change one word or something. You got to change the way I use it. I mean, it's is it's open to so much more. But what I mainly use it for, for me per, per, personally so far, is when I need to change like, um, let's go down here and we'll add. This is a line. Okay, so then we are going to escape, and we're gonna V and yank, and then we will V. Um, don't want to just write the same thing over and over again, and. This is in line. So I'm doing this. This is there's a reason for the madness here. So okay. So basically we have this is it's misspelled, but this is an N line. So say I wanted to go through and edit this to read. This is a line. It said, or this is end line now, but I wanted to go through and I want to say this is a new line in this file. So, if I wanted to change that to say this is a new line in this file, basically there is a way you can go through and change each line manually one by one, or you can use a macro. And now macros are great. I like I said, I'm just learning them. I'm just starting to mess around with them, but I am coming to realize that they are pretty powerful. To use a macro, what you got to do is you got to press Q. Q is going to start the macro and then you can press any other key you want to actually do it, but we're going to go with Q again. So my macro start is Q and then the letter I'm using is Q and you can see right down here it says recording, right? So you can see right where the cursor is. At this point, anything I do until I stop this recording is basically is recorded. I mean, hence recording. But say we wanted to change this to a new. So we're going to go ahead to that, and then we are going to go into insert mode and put a space, and then E W line. We're going to escape, and we're going to go ahead a word. So we'll go back, and then we'll go to the end of the word, and we'll go into insert mode, and we'll type in in this file period. We escape and we hit enter and then we quit. So basically what we did is we went to that line and we made a bunch of changes on it and then we saved or we exited back into normal mode. But we did all of that using a macro. So we were recording everything we did. So now what we want to do is we want to play that macro back. So we have one, two, three, four other lines that we want to look just like this one. So like I said, you can go through each line one by one, which with four lines wouldn't take you forever, but if you have a hundred different lines that you need to change that are all the same, um, this is a lifesaver. So you can go through line by line and change them all independently, or you can now play back your macro. So remember we did QQ for our macro, so we did Q to start it, and then Q is what we're gonna call. So we did QQ, we made our changes, and then we hit Q to quit. So now, to play that macro, since we have four more lines we want to change, we can do four, at symbol, and then our macro, Q. And just like that, we changed all four of those other lines. So if we had ten lines, we would have done ten at Q, and it would have changed all ten of them. So, real cool. So again, QQ records us as Q macro and so if we do back 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 
back and then insert mode and we take out line and insert this is a finish line in this file and we escape and then we hit Q again let's see nope it's not gonna work that way because we're at the bottom of the oh dang I didn't want to anyway you get the point Q to start recording and then you can press whatever letter to uh, you can do A through Z um, to uh, save what you're recording to and then you make your changes and then you hit Insert, or you hit uh, escape to get out of insert mode and you hit Q again and that's going to quit recording and then when you want to play it back for however many lines you need to change you do that number so if you need 10 lines you type 10 and then at and then whatever letter you pl press to record under uh, in our in our uh, um, example here it was Q so Q Q make my changes Q to quit and then I needed four lines changed so I typed four at Q and all of them changed so real simple I really suggest you look into them and check them out because they can do a lot better than I just explained in this short little video here but they're amazing it's cool I really suggest you give them a shot if you are not familiar with it um, it may have a bit of a learning curve but it's definitely well worth learning um, it is a great system it's a great program and uh, I'm loving it more and more every day so that being said uh, thanks for checking out the video I hope you find it helpful um, again real quick um, to change all instances of one word that was colon percent s forward slash and then we'll change new forward slash and we'll do old forward slash g and hit global so that changed all of them from new to old so again colon percent s forward slash word you want to change forward slash word you're changing it to forward slash g that'll change one word you can do that with sentences too you can write a whole sentence in there if you want if you have the same sentence written over and over and over um, but I usually use that just for single words and then if you want to change multiple lines of the same thing then you use that macro so QQ to start your macro under the Q and then make your change and then hit Q to quit recording and then however many lines you need to change if you need 10 you type in one zero for 10 and then you do at and then whatever letter you typed, we did Q for the macro, so did 10 at Q, and it would change all 10 of those lines. Again, great stuff. Definitely recommend checking it out. Hope you found this informational, and if you got any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless.